So never let anybody fool you. Um, when it comes to dog breeding, I mean, I, I've heard some horror stories. I've had some horror stories happen to myself, um, you know, when it comes to dog breeding. So I believe um, you never take a complete loss if you can learn from your lessons. And I believe that you can learn from other people's lessons. So with that being said, um, this is something new, a new segment I'm going to start. This, we're just going to call it Dog Breeding Horror Stories. What's going on, Bully Fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. So today, um, like I said, this is a new segment I want to start doing um, called Dog Breeding Horror Stories. It isn't always glamorous. We do come across losses. You know, we do take L's in this dog breeding game. And I just think, um, you know, maybe if I share some of these stories with you guys, you guys can learn from them. Um, if you guys ever cross it or whatever the case may be, or just to add to your knowledge. So this is gonna kind of be a collection, um, a playlist, whatever you wanna call it, of like some of the horror stories that I've come across when it comes to dog breeding, whether they've happened to myself or whether they've happened to other breeders and um, you know friends of mine and things like that. So let's get started with the story, right? So a local breeder out here, I started to become kind of cool with them, you know, give them tips and tricks here and there. You know, they would come pick up products, things like that. So we were becoming cool. So anyway, um, I had seen his setup because he had bought some cages off of me. So I brought the cages over there to him, helped him set them up, things like that. And I saw his layout. So he had um, a room that was dedicated, um, a large room. It was dedicated to all his dogs. He didn't have a lot, I think like, Four, something like that and he was you know kind of just getting started so anyway um i saw that he had the whelping box in the corner and things like that and i mean it, it, like i said it, it looked like a reasonable you know setup nothing crazy you know so this was like i think his second or third litter something along that lines so he had bred to my stud so the agreement was that you know i would get a puppy back i don't normally do this but i only did it because of the fact that you know, he was local um, and, you know, I, I thought it may be mutually beneficial in the future. So anyway, uh, we do the breeding and, um, you know, the female takes, she gets pregnant and she has the puppies. Everything kind of goes pretty much regular textbook scenario. You know, had, she had the puppies, you know, um, they had regular stuff, no real problems or anything like that. And what winded up happening was... Um, he was anticipating having his puppies. He had the puppies. Everything seemed pretty normal. You know, the normal stuff that you come across when you have a litter of puppies. And then um, I think the puppies were like, I think a little under a week old. Um, so anyway, everything seemed to be going good. What could go wrong? I get a phone call um, in the middle of the night. It's like one or, one or two o'clock in the morning. I get a phone call and, I'm, and, and I, all I hear is this guy hyster is hysterically yelling. And he says, oh, I see his legs. Oh, I see his legs. I can't believe, you know, this and all this and this, this, this and that. And, and like, he's he's so hysterical. Almost sounds like he's crying. I, I, I really kind of couldn't gather what he was saying. But he goes on to say, if you could come quick, please come here quick. So he didn't live far. I was worried about him more than 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 anything else. Um, so then I show up. And... Uh, I see him and uh, his wife um, out front of their house. Um, didn't it didn't look good, and he just tells me, uh, or I don't even think he told me. I think his his wife told me. I don't think he could even he was ready to even talk to me. The wife tells me, she says, um, "You just need to go inside and look." Um, she says, "I I can't believe what happened. We stepped out." For a minute, we stepped out to, to go grab, uh, you know, something at the store or whatever, um, 7-Eleven or whatever was open late at, at that time. Because over here, we have like CVSs and 7-Elevens that are open 24-7. Anyway, she's just like, you need, to, you just need to go in and, and see for yourself. So I go in, and what? Why? 
I knew I, I know stuff like this can happen, but I never thought I would see it firsthand myself visually. When I go inside that apartment, I see puppies. It was like four or five. Just limbs. It was crazy. It was crazy. So it winded up happening. It messes me up even thinking about it right now. But what ended up happening was, so they didn't secure the latch. So one of the female dogs, a new dog that they had purchased, so they don't know nothing about her. The dog got out, the female got out and dismembered all the puppies, got to the puppies. The mother, the mother was in a, in a, in a, in a crate separate so it's not like the mother was around she, she they kept the, the, the mother separate and i mean th this this dog just completely destroyed the puppies i mean ate some of them like it's crazy and i had known that stuff like this can happen and i had somewhat heard horror stories um but then when i did some more research i found that female dogs can do this it's like more of like um, if you're familiar with uh, if you're familiar with like lions and stuff like that, right? Um, a male lion will, you know, essentially kill um, the cubs that a female lion has if they're not his. Um, it's like an instinctual kind of thing. So some some dogs uh, some dogs do that. Um, like, female dogs will do that so that, I guess, like, they're the only ones with puppies or something like that. Um, it, it, it's, it, to my knowledge, I only know of this happening, like, one or two other times with, yet again, other breeders. I've always known to keep my puppies separate and keep the female separate. I have my puppies. My dogs can never get close to my puppies. But, um, hey, everybody's different. But I just... I couldn't, I couldn't believe what I saw with my eyes. Like I said, half, half puppy, halves, halves of puppies. Um, so I walk out and I see the dog uh, somewhere running around the yard or whatever. And um, I, I mean, I, I didn't even want to look at the dog. I, I didn't even want to look at the dog. I, it just completely like I, I was, it messed me up, it messed me up. So I could imagine how they were feeling. So what ended up happening was um, I, I, I just, I, I, there was one puppy, there was one puppy that survived. Um, it, was, it was a phenomenal stud. Didn't even matter. It, it, it survived. So I told, you know, I told them, I said, look, this, this is a lot right now. I said, let me take the one puppy um, and I'll, I'll take care of it. You know, I'll try to, you know, keep it alive. It had a puncture wound, so the odds weren't in my favor. Um, the dog had, like, probably bit it, you know, in its mouth and maybe let it go or whatever. Um, so it had, like, a puncture wound in its stomach. I did my best, um, you know, to uh, to keep it alive, and we did for quite some time. But ultimately, it did wind up passing because of its, its, its injuries. After that winded up happening with the puppies... Um, I, I, I didn't really, there, there was, there was really no more business to be done, um, with that breeder. Um, it, it's just, it was, it was rough, you know, I'm sure they learned a lesson. Um, and I mean, Hey, I, I, like I said, I've heard of it happening with, um, you know, with other, other breeders and stuff like that. So it's just, what's the moral of the story? I mean, the moral of the story is, is, is. From a very, very, very scary, you know, from a very, very, very horrific situation that happened, at least some of you guys, some people, some people, they may not know better, you know, you may not know better, and you're thinking it's fine to keep the puppies with all the other dogs, and one dog gets loose, and you don't know what's going to happen, anything's possible, it's a prime example, so I just wanted to share this, like, kind of dog breeding horror story with you guys because there is something to be learned from it you know there is something that 
you know, if there's somebody who was thinking, hey, you know what, I'll just put my puppies and the dogs in the same room or whatever, you might want to think twice about that, you know? So even if this saves one litter, this story was worth sharing, you know? Even if it saves one litter, it did. that litter, it's, it's too late for them, but it may not be too late for you or a friend of yours that doesn't know any better, you know? So if you guys found this story somewhat helpful, somewhat useful, um, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, and I mean, uh, if you guys want to hear more stories like this, you know, more, more dog breeding horror stories, I, I, I mean, I, 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 there's more I could definitely mention. There's, there's definitely more I could mention. Um, just from breeding this long, I've seen a lot of things, you know? So if it, like, yet again, if it, I always believe that you can learn from other people's lessons. So if it helps even one breeder, if it saves even one litter, it was worth telling the story to somebody, right? <laughs> so anyway, wow. I haven't, I've never really told the story like on camera like that or anything like that. I don't even really care to talk about it. Um, but yet again, if it helps even one breeder. So anyway, guys, I'm here at my destination. Um, so if you guys want to see more episodes like this, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks.